how are you out there? I hope you're fine. Here is teacher Priska Mtwenje with uh, another lesson today. Remember we're on strike and we cannot just be free and um, you know, leave things as they are. So we have to cover some content for the benefit of those students who are watching me. I'm going to teach today poetry. I'll start by advertising my book. I may not have sold to you. So here is a book that is comprehensive in poetry. You can see it, Dancing with Poetry, a comprehensive mastery in poetry. We have a comprehensive mastery series for poetry, oral literature, paper one, paper two, and creative writing. Right. So I appreciate you, audience. We have clicked about 780 subscribers. And I continue to encourage you to tell your friends to subscribe to this channel, which is educational. I know many people go for reactional videos, they go for travel videos, but that specific channel was aimed at teaching. So I'll be giving you just general information in poetry because I know this year they are going to set poetry. And so you should not regret not knowing some things in poetry. I'll start with um, simply asking you what poetry is. I hope you know. So when we talk about poetry, I hope you know that this is a musical language with some sort of imagery and it has to flow musically. You know, you can take the lines and uh, put in a tune and sing it. Yeah. So we do not have a definitive uh, definition for poetry, but at least we can look at the features. Normally we know that poetry has a subject matter, it has themes, uh, it, is, um, it has a setting where, which can be implicit or explicit, that is place and time. We also have a voice or persona or speaker and we have music in it or rhythm. Sometimes we have rhyme, yeah, whether it is regular or irregular. We have sound patterns within poetry. We have lines, we have a structured form, and we have stanzas, and we must be communicating in uh, imagery. So another question that most people meet is, uh, what is the poem about? What is the subject matter? Yeah. Now, when you are asked this, you can consider uh, taking a theme. Maybe you talk about this poem is about love, this poem about war, this poem is about oppression, and then you look for lines and explain exactly what it entails. Sometimes you can just go through the poem and we have the stanza, stanza approach or line by line and try to paraphrase, yeah? I hope you understand what paraphrasing is, giving your own understanding, yeah, of specific content. We have also a symbolic approach whereby you can go through a poem and uh, we have a deeper meaning. We have poems whereby you might be reading and um, uh, like, uh, take for example this poem about uh, the road not taken. If you have read it, then you can see symbolically it's talking about career. Picking a career and never regretting. Yeah. We have another poem. Um, the, is it the, the word that lives in the moon tree? It's also a symbolic one talking about a man that is eyeing women or, or another man's wives. All right. So we have aspects of stress also that are very important in poetry, whether you are dealing with paper one or paper two, you have to consider the aspect of stressed and unstressed syllables. Sometimes they are not really emphasized in high school, but it's very important for you to master these aspects because they can contribute towards your analysis of poetry. All right. We also have aspects uh, that are very important and are always set in poetry. Let me just check for it because I want to 
Uh, yeah. So we have aspects such as punctuation. Whenever you're dealing with poetry, look at them. Sometimes when you see like a, a semicolon, give weight to it because it uh, offers enjambment. Yeah? Like movement of thought. Yeah? Yeah, you move from one thought to another. You rest. Yeah? You pause for a while. When you see a full stop, possibly there is an end of a, you know, you know an um, idea. And therefore, we have to create such a pause so that the reader pays attention. Yeah? Um, if you look at poems by Hus, yeah? H-U-G-H-E-S. He really loves poems where we have full stops to show the flow of action. And whenever an action has happened, then there is a pause with a full stop. In other poems, we have commas. Of course, commas help us to pause and allow us to absorb information. Um, you also have to consider that some punctuation are there to offer us hesitation, such as hyphen. If you see hyphen ellipses in a poem, sometimes we have an incomplete thought or interrupted or uncertainty of ideas. Now, when you look at poem uh, poetry, uh, poetry sometimes takes variety of language. We have archaic language. I hope all of us know the kind of language William Shakespeare uses. Yeah, bear God without. Yeah. So that is a cake language or English. We have pidgin English also. As those of you who have interacted with New Integrated Book One, you've seen this poem as Mama Don't Kill My Chicken. Yeah? And that poem is pidgin throughout. We have vitrupilation. Those are the poems whereby sometimes people use a taboo language. Yeah? Bring out words as they are. We have also informal English. I hope you know informal English, whereby you can talk about guy, you can talk about cop instead of police, and so many others. So all these uh, choices have intentions, yeah? So you have to check out depending on which poem. Now I'll move on to poetic devices. I hope you know that we have verbal devices or verbal cues or verbal skills that we often use in poetry. Some of these um, devices include voice projection. And when you are handling this mostly it's in paper one, whereby you have to talk about the voice, I'll raise my voice, maybe I'll be loud enough to be heard when I'm saying this word because it carries weight, you know. We have stress. And uh, when you go to stress, we have word stress, line stress, or emphatic stress where you uh, have just to pick certain words because you want to articulate specific meaning. Maybe it's line stress because there is an intention again. Yeah? And in most cases, you bear with the, what meaning you want to bring out. Functional words mostly are stressed. Those are verbs, adverbs, adjectives, and nouns because we have specific communication. And you have to find out as a student when you're answering questions. We have tonal variation, which is another verbal skill. And here, you change or shift your voice, all right? So you can be soft to lull or to calm or to soothe. You can be loud to scorn, to mock, to show hatred or disgust, yeah? There is also voice variation. This is the volume, the pace, and speed of your communication can vary. You can be a bit, yeah, slow, fast. You can, uh, you know, be very loud or maybe just soft. Because you want to communicate certain feelings or emotions. We have intonation. We have tone of variation and intonation. I hope you heard. Tone of variation is the shift of voice. Soft or loud. When we come to intonation, there is rising and falling of the voice. And I hope you understand situations where 
you can have a rising international falling so that when you handle a specific poem you know that you'll rise or uh, you will have to fall there are so many situations that are related to that we have pauses we call them pregnant pauses if we have we want to give meaningful or momentary silence to create suspense sometimes we do use pregnant pauses and you will see this in a poem when you uh, you meet commas sometimes ellipses exclamation marks hyphen all right we have pitch or depth of voice huh? middle low or high sometimes when we are emotionally charged we can be excited furious surprised joyous irritated then we normally have a high pitch we can have a middle or low pitch when we are tired sad we are ending a conversation and so forth we have tempo also the speed of performance when we are dealing with paper one you meet some poems where you are told to use uh, say maybe how would you say this part so you can decide to be fast or slow fast possibly when there is urgency or excitement yeah when you are so excited most of us when you are excited we are very fast in how we'll speak i've won it i've won it yeah when there is urgency come on somebody's die then slow when we are relaxed there is introspection i don't know what is happening but i think there is something wrong right then there is volume loud or soft volume loud or soft now nonverbal skills or cues or aspects we have facial expressions and never just say facial expressions go specific and say whether you will raise your eyebrow to show confidence you will drop your eyebrow to show fear you will frown to show sadness you will smile to show joy you will sulk to show irritation and so forth there is posture or poise posture or poise comes when you gesticulate yeah and so you can gesticulate you can droop you can shiver you can falter you can stand upright depending on what you want to show then we have body movement yeah whereby you can have heavy or light steps you can jump you can dance you can sit you can bend and so forth we have gestures too yeah such as waving holding a fist pointing a finger punching folding your hands twisting the wrist clapping and so many others that we experience every day we have eye contact and don't just say eye contact but should be meaningful so you can face the audience when you want to show sincerity or confidence yeah you can move uh, your eyes a bit to short and taking maybe uh, from one person to another you can stare ahead to show confidence look down to show respect and so forth then we have dramatization dramatization comes when you have you are trying to show exactly what was happening it can be a mimicry of a movement a dance or so forth yeah now in situations where you've been given a poem and you've been asked yeah a question such as how do you say certain line consider to give us the verbal aspects but if they say how do you perform remember you cannot show the nonverbal without verbal so when they say how do you perform take the two both verbal and nonverbal for example you might say i will raise my voice to show my frustration then now you come up with the nonverbal whereby you say i look in the sky to seek god's intervention and this goes by the words in the poem 
you have to adhere by that. So that is my lesson for today in poetry. I know there's a lot that you might need. So I consider to ask you to just, you know, write a statement under the comment sections. And when I see that, I'll often respond. Thank you for giving me attention. And remember, I'm targeting as many students as possible. So kindly allow your friends to subscribe to my channel. And if you have not subscribed, do so because subscription is free. No one will charge you at that, but I'll be so appreciative because you'll be enhancing my work. Bye-bye for now.